militant, armed, you know, guns rights type of groups, which is which is actually a little scary now. This is where that black mm -hmm. Hebrew Israelite, this is, I think, one of the scariest points out of all these stories that we're going to cover um, because it's a more dangerous, this is violent, militant, ready to attack, you know, a state of mind that's like, you know, we're going to take over this nation from within. They read Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, which says that the Lord is starting a nation within another nation or something like that, which they interpret as this nation is starting in America, you know, and we're going to come from within. We're going to infiltrate all parts of this world. Top killer Otho Wallace was in court this afternoon. He's accused of shooting and killing Daytona Beach police officer Jason Rayner. Fox 35's Lara Greenberg was in the courtroom today. She joins us live with the latest on the story. Lara. John Othel Wallace was in court for just a couple of minutes today here in Volusia County, and he remained pretty calm while he was in there. You know that this uh, this is just the first time that we've seen him since last year. It was just a quick update on his trial and to check on his status with his attorneys. But here's a look at him inside the courtroom from this afternoon. Now Wallace is charged with murder of a law enforcement officer. Investigators say he shot Officer Jason Rayner last June and then took off, leading to a nationwide manhunt. He was found days later in a tree house near Georgia and was then charged. Almost two months later, Officer Rayner died from injuries related to that shooting. The charges against Wallace were upgraded to murder, and Wallace could now face the death penalty. That's what came up today in court. That's what came up today in court. The judge told Wallace his new attorneys were not qualified to handle death penalty cases. As far as I've been informed, they will be able to bring someone in to handle that. Louisiana minister shot dead in front of his own congregation, killed by a former church deacon and friend. Authorities now try to unravel a case filled with suspicion and signs of betrayal, a case leading them to one of two possible motives. On a Friday evening, investigators say Woodrow Carey barges into his old church wielding a shotgun and a handgun. Witnesses say he shoots Reverend Ronald Harris on the spot, then shoots him again at close range. As you might expect, there was a great deal of panic. More than 60 people were inside at the time, loudly singing and praying. Witnesses say one woman saw the gunman as he came inside the church, but no one could hear her screams of a warning until it was too late. And she was saying, he has a gun, he has a gun, he has a gun. Talisha Harris was standing nearby. Her father died in front of her, her children, and her mother. We applied pressure on him to stop the blood, but it was like so much blood. The shooter runs and soon calls police, allegedly confesses and surrenders. But now there are two mysteries. Just two days before, authorities say Carrie's wife filed a report accusing Pastor Harris of rape. Was it one time that they were together, one event, or was it multiple no, times? No, it, it, is, it is alleged that multiple times uh, these allegations took place. Over a period of months? Over a period of years. Over a period of months? Over a period of years. Over a period of months? Over a period of years. Over a period of months? Over a period of years. Over a decade of alleged sexual contact, investigators are trying to determine if the rape allegations may be a cover-up for a consensual affair. They're also looking at text messages between Pastor Harris and Woodrow Carey's wife, the sheriff suggesting that the two may have recently had an argument. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rahaha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. And a sincere shalom to you, other brethren. Honors to you, brethren, if you sisters, and shalom to the truth. Anyway, I'm going to credit this video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah to. Um, Apostle Tahar's video uh, I saw earlier um, that he did on Arthur Wallace um, 
is not a one west Israelite you can check that video out uh, and I'm just going to do my part, take on it as well uh, which is true you know this man was actually literally an Israelite uh, a so called Israelite I'm going to say him so called let me just say he was an Israelite so called for a few um, maybe months so he didn't even have enough time to even understand what an Israelite is nor when you first come in this is not anything that we're taught or that we teach to do right especially um, us at One West because we teach the New Testament and there's many scriptures in Matthew 5 would agree with thine adversary Apostle Paul said live peaceably amongst all men these are you know statues and commandments there's certain things set up in place for us as a um, people of the Bible, the people of the Most High, you know, how to conduct ourselves. So we clearly um, is not affiliated with this guy if he is an Israelite. I don't know. <clears throat> That's what they say. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that. This man, Vocab Malone, uh, they do these videos and we can clearly see in the Christian church, why do I say the Christian church is so dangerous? Well, you see the young men out there blowing themselves away. Guess what? On Easter, they're in church, right? When they go, they get locked up, they read the Bible. They, so you can really equate all these bloods and crypts. They got crosses around their necks, right? They do. They tattoo crosses. They tattoo pictures of Jesus, Caesar, Borgias, Serapis, Christi. They Serapis, uh, uh, they, they tattoo these pictures and paste them all over themselves. So we can clearly see you can you shouldn't you can't really so much identify a group, especially our group, to a, a few particular murders. But you can identify Christianity because the theology of Christianity is to so-called love God, but don't do what God say, don't follow God's laws, eat the poison that uh, we're we're even scientists prove that we shouldn't eat, right? Go get down on your hands and knees and beg your wife for hand in marriage. We're all equal, right? This is what they teach, and this is the product of that, okay? A lot of people don't want to admit it. As I did the last video, Christianity is one of those religions that has helped destroy us. Remember, they gave us a slave Bible. They took the Old Testament out, right? And they set up pastors and preachers and set us up in little corners. You can watch the movie um, Birth of a Nation. And they set up preachers to teach us and and how to convert a Negro. You can look this stuff up. What, where were we before we were Christians? And they give us no other history before that. So we can clearly see if that man went into that church and he truly believed in the Most High, right? He wouldn't have shot the man the man wouldn't have committed adultery with his wife. The wife wouldn't have committed adultery with him. All these things would be settled. And his lusts and desires, he would have a few women, wives. There was nothing unlawful about that. I can get many scriptures on that. He wouldn't have to do that. But this is the product of Christianity. So I'll get a, um, uh, a couple scriptures to back this up. I'll also show you that there's many Christian extremist groups and the biggest extremist group is y'all already know. How do we get here? What religion was forced on us? We know the biggest extremists, man. And these people have the nerve to put it up that we're the extremists. See, you could do, they could do whatever they want to us. Rape, rob, beat us, hang us, lynch us, castrate us, steal our women, sell our children, feed our children to alligators. They can do all these things. But the minute we stand up and even speak against it, holding a Bible on the corner, how the hell are we terrorists and we standing out there outside on the front with a Bible in the open air? I've never seen a terrorist do that. I've seen terrorists or I've heard of terrorists hiding in the basement posting little things up, putting masks on their face, doing a little video camera out in some lost field. <laughs> but you see us right where we at. And this is the persecution that's coming to us, man. This is part of it. 
Anyway, Isaiah 54 and 17. Behold, 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever sh uh, sh shall gather together, these shall fall for my thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and, th and that bringeth forth an instrument for his works, and we know his works, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants, who is the servants and the saints, Psalms 148, I believe 14, of the Lord, right? And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So this guy went into saying we out trying to secretly get into the different militaries and this and that. They're actually taking something that is very spiritual and they're flipping it and trying to make it seem like we're very carnal and we ought to just um, hate everybody. When we literally had police come up to us and say, hey man, y'all guys are pretty cool, right? We, we just out to teach and do the Lord's word. But this is what they do. But guess what? Vocab, the, um, I want to call them they, the, the other guys that are the lovers of vocab and whatever they do, you know, which is our people, right? Because this is what the Bible for anyway. Our people that want to continue, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to come against the Lord. But it's not going to stop the destruction. You know, it's not going to stop. All we're doing is prophesying the destruction. Hell, you got the president who will prophesy what he get ready to do and go in another country and bomb that. They will do that. They'll say, well, when 9-11 happened, well, we will not rest. We're going to go into Afghanistan and we're going to uh, weapons of mass destruction. You're not allowed to have them, but we can, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> this is what they do, man. You can't take these. See, at the end of the day, no matter what vocab, no matter what these guys say, they're only gathering together their elect, right? Believe it or not, they have a particular elect too. The Most High has an elect, and Satan has an elect, right? So they're just gathering together their elect, which is which is good, because this is all part of prophecy. We're not mad at anybody who say, hey, I'm a Christian, uh, I want to be a Christian. That's for your destruction. I mean, that's what you want to do. But if you come against us, know that at the end of the day, it's chop suey with the scriptures, you know? It's easy work on you Christians, we go into those words, we go into the understanding and the meanings, it's easy work. We go into prophecy, easy work, you know. We had a Christian come up to our camp recording. It must have, must have been one of his boys. I said, okay, when you record, just make sure you don't shut off the camera. And when he asked the question, we went into something, boom, he shut off that camera and walked down the street, man. Walked right on down the street. Anyway, Isaiah 55 and 11, so... Let me go on to 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, just like the, those plagues, those missiles, right? And returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth the bud, because that's what the, that's what the rain is for, right? The nutrient, the nourishing the earth, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, right? And that's why this word is um, compared to... Um, living water because it, it feeds us right and it brings and it brings forth fruit anyway so shall my word that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I pleased and it shall prosper and the thing whereto I sent it so at the end of the day that um, everything the most high says is going to happen is going to happen Jeremiah 51 and 9 we would have healed let me go on. Um, let me go to seven. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. And that's this Christianity, man. That's one of the drunkenness, uh, filthy drinks. The nation have drunken her wine, Christianity, wherefore <laughs> their nations are mad, right? They're looking and saying, wait a minute. Now you're saying that our wives can't do this. Now they, they're, they can do whatever they want and they could be this and they could be that. A lot I can't say in the video. It says Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her 
take balm for her, for her pain. If so, if so be she may be healed, we would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. She is not healed. Forsake her. When the missiles hit this place, ain't no healing. So, you know, at the end of it all, vocab and the, the Christians and everybody, they can say what they want. They can write books. And he's making money off this stuff. And um, you do got some Israelite groups that are very shaky that really, I can't say they don't have no business teaching because they're out there. And the Most High got them out there. But they're off on a lot of things. Okay? And it says, And let us go everyone into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and lift her up even to the skies. Okay? So, when the smoke, you know, and after this place is destroyed, you know, I believe Matthew 18, you know, there's, look, for what you did, what you did, and what was done to the people of Israel, you know, vocab and these other Christians, they will all say, no matter what, if you've done something wrong, you should be paid, you should be judged for what you've done via court system of God or whatever else. But when Ecclesiastes 3.15 says, the Lord requires that which is past, now, all of a sudden, anybody can be saved. And this is not how the Lord works. This is not how the Most High works, man. This is not how the Most High works. He sent his son even to suffer for the children of Israel, man. The Most High sent his own son. Okay? Let me get an article real quick. These are Christian extremist groups, at least six of them. It's a lot of them. The Army of God, right? They got one called the Army of God. Wow. Wow. And they're about cleaning up a society to make Babylon great. They have a, um, a zeal, but they're not according to the scriptures, you know. They're not about waiting on the Lord. And a lot of them ain't of the most high anyway. And really a lot of these Christian extremist groups are like those racists that brought us here in the name of Christianity. Another one is called the Eastern Light Lightning, e a.k.a. the Church of the Almighty God. The Lord's Resistant Army, the LRA. I may get into some of these. The National Liberation Front of Tapira. The Phineas Priesthood. Now, I've read a lot about Phineas. Now, if these white Christians, these white supremacists knew about Phineas, they would know his name means the mouth of brass. And the mouth of brass is translated by white scholars as uh, the Egyptian Negro or the Egyptian Nubian. White supremacist groups uh, don't necessarily have, uh, they have a religious orientation. Some of them atheists as long as they believe in white superiority. But the Christian identity movement specifically combines white supremacist ideology with Christian terrorism. I might get in that a little later, but I'm going to read another scripture. 1 Peter 3 and 14, But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Right? This, this is the message basically from the Lord. Don't be afraid. Fear not what one can do to the body, but to the soul. Right? We need to fear the Lord. Um, I'm going to get another one. Verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. So this is clearly that clear that we don't teach to go out and do evil works where we really teach to do the work of the Heavenly Father because the scripture says, woe to them that call good evil and evil good. So we don't do evil works. But what does Christianity support? Christianity support a lot of things that I can't say in this video, but they support these things. Right? They support it all. But Romans, the first chapter, speaks totally against it. And if they are not in support of it, they're not pushing a narrative to say, hey, this is not, uh, the, 
you know, the way to be a Christian and they're not doing videos and moving forward and correcting their own house. Anyway, I hope this lesson was edifying. Uh, that's pretty much all I have on that. Shalom.